know, obviously there are questions that we could deal with perhaps in question and answer, and I will stop here, or maybe on the third night of Qadr we could look at it, what is night itself, what is Qadr, what is the night of Qadr, because night has its own reality, the night of Qadr has its own reality, inshallah. Um, let's start with question and answer. Maybe we'll try and go back and forth between the men and the women. Assalamu alaikum. Um, first, I would like to thank the management and Mulana for such a lovely um, venue and uh, lecture and I've been uh, trying to focus on my prayer and I must tell you that it's bringing out beautiful meditation because when I focus that look Allah is watching me and I'm praying and um, I try to visualize flowers and perfume and it feels really good I think but I wanted to ask you can a person inherit, inherit, you know, the Obiya, I would tell you, call it. Oh, yes. yes. Because I feel my father, he was the son of a Molana, and he was very um, alert to people. When you would meet somebody, he would tell them at once what they, what's happening to them, what would be happening to them in the future. So I was wondering if you could tell me if a person can inherit this. It's quality. Yes, there, there are many good qualities that one inherits. Uh, spiritual qualities, you know, positive and negative qualities. The point is that if he or she have inherited that, and uh, the, he or she has to maintain that in oneself, protect that sort of special quality that one have inherited. Having said that, we also have seen that those who have inherited these qualities as well have gone completely to the extreme, such as the son of Nu. Although he has inherited a lot of good qualities of Nu, but we find that, for example, he was someone, Laysa min ahlik, as the Quran says, you know, he's not from you. Although Nu wants to save him, but he says, he's not from your ahl, it's not from you. So, inheriting spiritual qualities, goodness from the seniors, from the parents, from those who associate with a lot, you know, some qualities we inherit from them, like the teacher and the student. Just by being with them, you know, we inherit good qualities without, you know, him teaching, just by being, right? So, yes, that is possible. And, and really, mashallah, I appreciate your sharing the thought of yours of flowers and, you know, actually this is the prayers which are giving you to imagine those things rather than you are imagining those things first and the prayers is happening. So it's the other way. And usually it's the case when you when you're reciting Hadith Kisa, when you're praying, you know, there's some sort of perfume, some sort of taste in your mouth of fruits that comes about automatically. So it's the prayers that does that. It's not rather where we imagine the flowers so that we can imagine God. That is also one way. That is also an approach. But as a reality, it's from God, it comes, you know, to us, and we see these things, and we imagine these things. Yes. I think um, also if you have any questions, it doesn't have to be about tonight's lecture, but it could be about the previous night's lectures as well. Right? Since nobody is asking the question, I, I'm, I, I feel kind of uh, <clears throat> to encourage everybody to do the questions because we talked about it and yes. you really appreciate Q&A because it uh, gives insight to what people are thinking. Uh, my question, Moran uh, Saab, is this. I've always wondered whether one is punished 
or one suffers because of your sin, by your sin, or for your sin. I like to differentiate between the two. By is you mentioned, for example, that he, you mentioned the azar is in the sin itself. So I'm assuming that the Quran says that you are punished by yourself. But when you say that you are punished for your sin, that means somebody outside of you is punishing you. So if you can clarify, does God punish or does sin itself punish you? Very good question. Very good question. As we recite, La ilaha illa anta inni kuntu min al -dhalimi. We are the one who have oppressed our soul. Right? It's the zulm or the punishment is, is the darkness of our soul. It's the blindness from that divine light that we can't see. So that is the, uh, you know, uh, that is a true punishment. You know, we tend to imagine, or we, or what the Rivayat tend to point out to, the azar from outside. You know, I have done something, and, and now in order that I have done this, my is hellfire, or the food which is untasty, which is not tasty, which is like thorny food, for example, given like different forms of azar that's been described. But all in all, it really returns back to that soul of insan, right? And it's these different forms of azab described and depicted are nothing but the different types of action, of different types of sins that he has committed, the different forms of it. But it is him. It is not something from him. It is himself. The feeling of uh, being burnt is something else. The feeling of something sh you know, shuffling through our throat is something else. Right? The feeling of being far away from the family members are something else. But it's, it's, it's me. Now, all of these different forms that have been depicted and described is, the, is, the, uh, is due to the action that I have carried out. Imam Sadiq al to Abu Basir says that when a person dies, six illuminating bodies enters the grave while he's being buried. There will be a young lad in front of him, like a young man, a beautiful looking young man in front of him. Another bodyguard on the right, on the left, at the feet. And then he describes, he says that the one in the front is your, is your, is your, is your fast which will protect you, for example. So our actions take these forms. But at the end of it, it's just me. And my distance from God, actually. You know, but not Jamia Shar al Akhirah. Shar al Akhirah. There is Jamia Shar in the dunya, earthquake, fire, so on and so forth. But the Shar al Akhirah, in reality, there is only one. And that is distance from God. You call that Dari, you call that hellfire, you call that, you know, whatever. There is only one Shar in the air. And that is distance from God. Um, I have a quick question. It's about um, when I'm saying my prayers. Well, I think a lot of us, when we're saying our prayers, then there's nobody else around us. We're in our room, so if we're saying our prayers, it's not to impress anybody. It's because we sincerely believe that this is important for us. And uh, I, I know sometimes uh, the thought comes to my mind uh, when I'm going to such or when I'm standing up, Ya Allah, I'm happy to be here. Or Ya Allah, I'm happy to do such battle for you. Even though, of course, I'm reciting the, the azkar of the prayers, and I know the Arabic and the translation, but if that thought comes to mind, it's not really disturbing my prayers in any way, is it? No, not at all. No, no. 
That's a good thought and one should be thankful of that. And one should bring about that thought as a matter of fact while praying that I should I am really pleased to be here because our mind have that ability to do so while we are focusing on the translation, while we are really, you know, focusing, we are facing the Qibla and praying. But at the same time we could really imagine that how happy I am, how thankful I am to you. So that's good. And that really helps from our mind going here and there. You know, if I focus on my part itself, which is in, which is in relation to God, you know, that's better than I'm thinking about you know, other things. Yes. Salaikum. So, this is a question from the previous lecture that you gave. And you told us a story about where you um, symbolize every animal as um, greed or long hope. And I didn't quite get the part where you um, described uh, on about long hope, because don't we all like start something with hope? So I, I was just wondering if you could elaborate more on that. Thank you very much. That's a very good question. Having long hopes means that imagining that we will be living here forever. And, and, and doing things that as if we are here. You know, we're never going to die, for instance. Right? Uh, planning for the future, you know, having hope for the future, that's very good, that's very positive. But not in the sense that, okay, you know, I live in such a way that I'm going to live here forever. That's having long hope. As a Suleiman, you know, he would ration things. He would pile up, for example, his storage of with rice and food and stuff. And he would say that I'm doing this so that I don't waste time shopping and I rather worship. Right? This is a, one of the ways of saving time. But some people ration things in the sense that, oh, you know, that I'm gonna live forever. You know, without looking at that, okay, I'm doing this for this purpose. That is for you know, saving time to do worship. If the time comes that if there is somebody in need, then I'll give away because that is also worship. But if I'm saving it, that is for me, you know, that I'm going to live forever. So if the time comes about to give, then I'll say, oh, I don't have, you know, I have to, you know, next month, I don't know what I'm going to do next year, what's going to happen, right? So that's what long hopes mean, long, having long hope. Okay. Okay. Beautiful, excellent lecture, thank you very much. You explained so nicely about the timing, you know, time to do the prayers or place to do uh, prayers. If one is doing prayer not on time and doing some worldly thing instead of doing the prayers on time and then he finishes whatever worldly thing is doing and then he goes, does that become shiv? No, shiv is a very, uh, no, it doesn't become shiv. It's better that it's highly, highly recommended, extremely recommended. And one of those things are uh, uh, Bahjat say that you know when they ask him how to reach, I said Qazi Tabatabai also I mentioned this, to reach high levels of spirituality. You know, just do prayer on time. We don't need anything else. Just pray on time, one will reach. So praying on time is highly emphasized because it's a very specific time. And one might say that, oh, I'm not in a state, I want to have prepared myself and all that. You know, then we are being attached to these things. We are being attached to some of those things that we really we want to get that high. We want to have that spirit, feeling of spirituality. There's that, that feeling there. The reality is just time happens, just pray. You know, just do what you want to pray on time. I had a question regarding the night of Qadr. Yes. What is meant by the descending of the angels and the spirits? Yes. Very, very, very good question. Uh, it's Tanazzalu Malaikatu Warru, as we say. It's Tanazzalu, which is a perpetual tense used that every night of Qadr there will be angels descending and Ru. This Ru is not 
archangel. It's not Jibrail. It's a rule which is, you know, min amrira. Nobody can comprehend what rule is. It's an independent entity, and God is saying that descends on the night of heaven. All the angels will descend on the night of heaven. Because it is the night in which destiny is destined, even of angels. Not only the destiny of ours, even the destiny of angels is destined. Even the, des the task which Israfil, you know, Mikael, Israel is supposed to do, it is destined. But where does it descend? It descends upon the heart of the Imam of the time. He endorses it. Even Jibra'il is endorsed by the Imam of the time because he is in Sani Kamil. That's why in Sani is known as Ashraful Makhlukat. Human being is higher than angels. Jibra'il clearly said, you know, I can't go any more further on the night of Miraj. If I go any further, my wings will burn. Wings symbolize as intellect, as aql. Angels are pure intellectual beings. You know, we tend to imagine them of having wings and baby face and all that. But it's pure intellectual act, intellectuality. Right? So here, now if we take any, if we take Jibra'il as the intellect of Rasul, the Aqli Pamper, we are going a bit more deep. If Jibra'il is Aqli Rasul, even the Aqli Rasul way stayed there and Rasul went higher, which is beyond imagination. That's why, you know, we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that nearness, that hope is beyond intellectual capacity to understand. One thing is ill, that's why the Prophet said, Rabbi zidni ilma. But beyond that is Rabbi zidni fil hayra, in hayra, in hayrat, in astonishment, which is beyond that. I recognize my Lord by the breaking of my plans. Who is planning? Ali is planning. Ali, the insani kamil. The Ali, the perfect soul, the perfect planner that any one can imagine. If there be an insan like Ali, who is perfect, and if he plans, his plan is the most perfect. He has planned. He is planning. Ali is planning. Now this plan is not a dunyavi plan, huh? not a worldly plan. It's an ukhravi plan. Ali doesn't plan anything without imagining the akhirah. Ali doesn't plan anything without imagining God. But his plan is broken. Look how God beautiful, how, how beautiful God is. He says, wow, that's my Lord. Beyond my calculation, beyond my plan. And then he believes in God more. That's how he approaches God, not, not rather, for example, we say that, okay, the plan of Ali is broken, then he thinks that, okay, then inshallah, you know, there is something hikmat behind it, or, you know, I was weak in my plan, I will do it again, I don't know what to do. No, he's looking at the essence of God, the reality of God, and the breaking of his plan is increasing in his marifat, in his understanding, in his knowledge of God. So the nuzul of the angels on the night is that all angels descend on the earth and it descends upon the heart of the Imam and that's why we do tawassu to the Imam because destinies descend, the rule descend. You know the Quran is clearly talking about descent. It's talking about tanazzalul malaikatu waru. All malaika, wal malaika to waru. It is nuzul. And on the night of Qadr. So this nuzul has to be somewhere. They have to land somewhere. They have to come somewhere. Yes? There's a sister over here who's very shy. Can you ask the question herself? Her question is, what is the difference between imtihan and punishment? Because people who are going through a rough time, so how do you differentiate for them if it is a sin or it's an imtihan? It's a good question. Uh, it's just the other side of the coin. 
One side is intihan, the other side is azab. Now the point is that, for example, if I if I am watchful enough of my actions of myself, and even after being that, I face difficulty, then it's a, it's a test. Imam Hussein. And the Quran clearly says, Ma asaba min musibatin. There isn't any musibat min Allah. All musibat is from God. Everything is from God. Whatsoever I face. But if I have woman yattabillah, the one who is muttaqi, God very God conscious, Yahdi Khalbu, his heart will be guided. So the point here is how I how I react to what's happening. If that be a imtihan or if that be a azab, it doesn't really matter. If I'm muttaqi, I'll do a safa. You know, if that be a sin and I face this, you know, because I'm being I'm paying back in this dunya, which is much better than in the hereafter. So I do a safa for that. So that this azab or musibat doesn't intensify. And at the same time, while I'm doing a staffa, I'm relying on that source and that qudra, that power, that sabr is been given to me. Because I'm connecting myself to God. He is the one who has sent this. So I'm directly connecting to him. Just like how we spoke about the dog and the owner of the dog, and he asked the dog to come and take it rather than we fight with the dog. So this thing has happened, I'm facing it. Now, I do a staffa, or if it's an imtihan, I say that it's an imtihan, oh Lord help me, I still do a staffa for that. I still you know, see, seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the way to figure out whether this is a musibah, or a azab of my actions, or a test, calculating oneself, did I do something wrong? You know, right? And then, yes, I have done. Then try to make it up for that the mistake that I have done. You know, it could be anything, right? Qaza namaz, for example. You know, we have to really make those things up because we don't know what we have missed, and because of missing that, what we face. Imam Sadiq Ali Salam, amazing hadith. A very, it really shook me when I read this hadith. Whatsoever is in the heaven and whatsoever is in the earth, if a man turns this into gold and he gives him charity in the way of God, he will not make it up for that one qaza prayer that he has missed, for that one wajib prayer that he has missed. One wajib prayer. It's that powerful. We don't know because we are unaware of the metaphysical reality, what's going on at that hour, and what we are supposed to do in that hour. I think that's, I think that's all the questions we have uh, time for today. Um, so we have a couple things that we wanted to touch base with you on. Um, I know we did a fatiha earlier. Uh, we did miss a mark so I, I, I'd like to uh, announce it again. Um, I'd like to announce that uh, the passing away of Marhuma Zainab Abdullah Sajjan. Uh, she was the sister of Ghulam Abbas Sajjan, and she passed away this morning in Minnesota, um, as well as Marhuma Rubab Samani, who was the sister of Yarali Samani, and she passed away yesterday in Toronto. Uh, so what I'd like to do is request you all to remember them, and all Marhumi, with the Surah Fatiha and then later with Namaz e Habiya Mayyid. Thank you very much, inshallah. We'll do the Sikr and Musibat a little bit when we'll raise the Quran on our head, Bika and Bayali, inshallah, the Messiah of Imam Ali. My apologies, so I couldn't really bring them in our lecture, inshallah. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa And um, so what we, we 
we've talked a little bit uh, in the last couple days about uh, how we had an IT team put together. Uh, so I'd like to ask Hussain to come up and just give us an update. Uh, is that Hussain? Thank you, Maria. So again, I'm Hussain Sajan, and I'm part of the OILS IT development team, and I'd like to just, first of all, acknowledge some of our team members. Uh, we can't do this work without them. So we have here Mamad Abbas Taki, we have Jabir Rustam, we have Hussain Kareem, we have Jihan Shirazi uh, as well. Uh, all these people have played a key role in what you're seeing today, and, and including our live streaming and so forth. We do have our website up uh, on screen here. Uh, and I'm sure most of you are very familiar with it. We're always just going to um, go around the website to just give you a couple of highlights in terms of um, when our events are posted, um, that you can register for events and so forth. We do use a technology by Eventbrite to register for all of our events. Um, so we encourage you to sign up for um, our website, become part of our members, and also make sure that we have your latest contact information. Um, Miriam is going to go around and just give you a, a form um, so that we can just have your updated contact information this way we can distribute to you when we do our e-blasts and so forth so you're always updated with our latest uh, events and programs. Mo, did you want to say a couple of words on, on the website? So um, this is going to be the second time we're going through, um, as you all know, that we launched the website for uh, the Organization for Islamic Learning. Uh, we've also gone ahead and rebranded, so you'll see uh, our logo is updated on the website. Um, one thing to note is that we have started using Eventbrite to register for uh, all our programs. And we ask that you use this uh, so that we know in terms of numbers, in terms of whatever we need for planning, uh, so we understand who's coming and who will be able to show up, what maybe even who's uh, maybe watching online. So for our newest programs, we're going to be showcasing them in the front page here. If you click for more information, um, it'll bring you to the event itself. Um, at the same time, at the very top here, we have um, the, a link directly to the event. Uh, on any page of the website, you'll be able to see this at the top. It says, uh, read more. As you continue scrolling down, you'll find some more information about uh, the presenter, uh, the presentation, and uh, some more details about the event. If you continue down, you'll see a link here for Eventbrite, uh, as well as a link for live streaming, uh, which we hope to do uh, sort of moving forward. Now, there's uh, single event registration and all event registration. And what will happen is that if you actually um, go over to the uh, Eventbrite website. Uh, you'll see here that you can actually select the specific dates that you'll be attending um, and then register. Uh, the process overall is uh, very simple um, and you can actually go through that. Um, for live streaming, you just click on the link and you'll be able to uh, go to our archive of lectures. As you can see, we've got our lecture from tonight and the most recent lecture will appear at the top here. Um, with uh, the way we'll see everything that's happened and, uh, from earlier today. So, um, just something I've been working on. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mom, and pass this back to Maria. Um, so, I've been given. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Sorry? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I've been given the task of making sure that each one of you fills out one of these forms. Uh, the reason that we are asking everyone to fill out a form is we may have some of your contact information, but definitely there's some errors in our database from previous years, and we want to make sure that the information is getting to you. It also allows us to um, ask you whether or not you are interested in volunteering uh, and which category you fall into, whether you're a senior or a new parent, a new parent implying that you have young children, or whether you're a youth. We want to start developing programs that are catered to each of our audiences, so your information helps us uh, create the programs that are beneficial for this community. Um, 
it only takes two minutes. I'm not kidding. So what we have is the volunteers going, going around and passing around these forms. Please fill them out. I'm not allowed to leave until you fill them out. And between, I'm basically your stopgap between now and Mugrip, so please fill them out so that I can break my fast too. Uh, so our volunteers are going around. Please do fill them out. Um, and maybe we can just pass around the sheets and the pencils. So the forms are over there and there's a pencil over there. By the way, there's three minutes to look her, so please write quickly. Washrooms, you need to do the before and the last, it's really at the back there. 